my name is Stephen Goodfellow. I'd like to talk to you about SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which has, for decades now, been scouring space for anything that resembles signals denoting sentient life for a significant amount of time without having received any transmissions that could be perceived as emanating from an intelligent source. In a galaxy that has been around for billions of years, the argument that there are a plethora of super civilizations populating its spiral arms and halo is very persuasive. Should we not have received signals at the moment we pointed a radar telescope into the heaven? I find little credibility in the arguments that these civilizations failed to communicate with us because they either did not want to communicate with other species or that we are unable to understand their mode of communication. True, many of these super civilizations would fall into either of these two categories, however many would not. It is reasonable to assume that those that did or do want to seek out other intelligent life in the galaxy should have become very proficient at it, considering the age of the galaxy. According to this reasoning, we should be very unlucky to have missed some sort of extraterrestrial broadcast that would be understood by us in some level as being transmitted from a sentient source outside our solar system. Yet, wherever we point our listening devices, all we hear is the whisper and random crackle of natural events and background radiation. What could be the cause of this silence? It is of course quite possible that we may yet discover a transmission or develop a communication process that we as yet cannot comprehend. However, there may be another, and to many of us, uh, somewhat more chilling reason for this absolute absence. What if there is no one there? At a glance, such an argument seems ludicrous in the light of the billions of stars in our galaxy and the endless possibilities for sentient life to evolve from them. However, what if we include another factor into the formula? What if nature is universal and plays by a set of rules that are inviolate throughout the universe? What if those rules dictate that sentience is a temporary condition in any location and is ultimately hardwired for destruction. This is not so absurd an argument as it may seem at first glance. Consider the endless march of extinct species embedded in the fossilized history of our own planet, or how the existence of our own species teeters on the brink of extinction in the furnace of thermonuclear war. The scenarios for our obliteration are many and varied enough for us to realize that it is easy for our species to shed this mortal coil. One of the remarkable observations one can make about the force of nature is that, more often than not, it presents phenomena that are interrelated to the surrounding environment. Evidence for this can be observed by observing, say, the beaver. The beaver removes trees from around a body of flowing water and builds a dam. Eventually, the dam creates a blockage that over the years starts to silt up. This new environment becomes home to a host of other creatures, but for the beaver, the environment becomes untenable and it has to move on. A stork hunts frogs in a pond. When the frog supply is exhausted, the stork has no option than to search for food elsewhere or perish. In both instances, we can observe an inevitable sequence these would appear to be the rudiments of an unchangeable law that would come under the heading of the force of nature. We can see that ecosystems are dependent on one another, yet they force change upon one another. Only some sort of undefined law of change seems unchanged. However humbling it may seem, it would be foolish to believe that Homo sapiens are not an inherent part of this universal system. If we could stand back and look at our behavior on a global level and ask, what is the single greatest impact we are having on our universe? The answer is obvious. Our species is introducing carbon into the biosphere that has been covered over by consecutive eons of time. The oil and coal that we extract seemingly for our own purpose is much like the beaver building a dam. We unknowingly trigger untended events that may not be conducive 
to the existence of our species, but may be of great benefit to the system as a whole. What if, in performing this inevitable action, we would have fulfilled our role, the byproduct of which may be that our own species is slated for extinction? Our species has a biased sense of time. We see our collective actions upon the planet as a disastrous event for our biosphere. However, let us consider the worst case scenario and extrapolate. Imagine we extinct ourselves in an apocalyptic thermonuclear war. All our cities burn, filling the biosphere with huge amounts of carbon and high levels of radioactivity. There is significant die-off of flora and fauna, indeed a grim picture. But now consider such an event through the time span of the planet. The eon between the mass extinction of the dinosaurs and the present is a mere one seventieth of the planet's existence, or to put it another way, roughly one year out of a lifetime of a human being, the equivalent of a pregnancy. If the planet were alive and cared about its biosphere, it might consider this span of time to be a mere inconvenience. Within this time scale, let us consider the ramifications of our massive thermonuclear extinction. The biosphere would have access to all that carbon we extracted in the form of coal and oil. Carbon that, until we came along, had been silted under, trapped away from interacting in the biosphere as once it had. The radiation would ensure accelerated random mutation, allowing for a greater variety of species to proliferate. In short, come back 65 million years later, and our species handiwork could be appreciated in all its glory, a richer, more varied and active biosphere for the Earth. This cannot but help force the question, what if this is the sole purpose of sentience? That this is an inevitable pattern of extinction by civilization building species repeating itself endlessly, forever, everywhere in the universe. An infinity of species evolving sentience, fertilizing their biospheres and then self-destructing? There would be no super civilizations, merely a temporary emergence, like a blossoming flower. If this were so, would it not be a reasonable answer for the question, why is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence not receiving signals? Thank you for listening. Goodbye.